Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. In our last episode, we focused primarily on Endor and how it's significant to Palpatine and whether Palpatine was going to appear in Episode 9. Most likely he won't. Today we're going to look at some other scenes in the trailer and break down some locations and see if we can figure out where exactly they are located. Keep in mind this is just a thought exercise. As we stated last time, Lucasfilm is excellent at misleading audiences with trailers. J.J. Abrams especially likes doing this. So it's definitely possible that the locations in this trailer are locations we've never seen and newly created by J.J. Abrams for this film, which means this whole entire video might be pointless. And if you're okay with that, let's begin. If this were the Marvel Universe, for instance, and a new film came out with cool looking familiar locations, I wouldn't really bother trying to figure out which planet that scene took place. And that's because there's only like 40, 50 planets in the MCU, there just isn't that much lore. Trust me, I know. And I actually did that exact video on our second channel, Generation Films, but in Star Wars, the huge database of knowledge known as the Expanded Universe is commonly used by new creators to the franchise as sort of an inspiration for their own content. So usually if you dig deep enough in Star Wars lore, you'll find some correlations or at least some coincidences. So for almost half of the teaser trailer, we're on a very sandy and perhaps familiar world. We're cued in by Rey, who is heavily breathing once again, which seems to be like a very normal thing in Star Wars, at least in the new trilogy. It's almost as if they're trying to give us anxiety. Or is it supposed to be like mysterious? Are we supposed to wonder, you know, are they in poor shape? How are they exerting themselves so much? Maybe they're deaf stick addicts? I don't know. We hear in the narration Luke talking about passing down everything he has learned to the next generation. A thousand generations of Jedi and all their knowledge now live in Rey. But ultimately, it's her fight. I'm paraphrasing, but I guess this narration is to remind us that Rey is indeed the last Jedi for now. And, well, what does The Last Jedi need to do? Probably learn how to become a better Jedi. Now, based on the sand color of this world could be Tatooine or Jakku, these were both very prominently featured worlds in several of the other movies in the franchise. The rock outcroppings actually bear some resemblance to the small desert moon of Jeddah, which actually got messed up and most likely has an asteroid belt around it after the Death Star took a chunk out of it. So based on that narration from Luke, I'm guessing that Rey is on a very similar journey to the one Luke had after Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda died on him. Rey is on a journey to learn more about the Jedi Order and what the Jedi Code is all about. She needs all the help she can get so she can refine her skills so that she can take down the evil First Order. Naturally, a good place for her to start would be Luke Skywalker's home planet. Rey might have been a junker on a backwards planet, but even she probably heard of Luke Skywalker. I mean, after all, Luke is as famous, if not more famous, than Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon. And she definitely knew about those two things. She wasn't living under a rock, she was living under an ATAT -AT walker. So knowing Luke's backstory makes sense for her to visit Tatooine, and perhaps she even knew about Obi-Wan Kenobi. Although it should be noted, when she was hanging out with Luke, it didn't seem like he was in the mood for discussing much. We're not really sure if Luke left anything on Tatooine though. He basically bolted after seeing his aunt and uncle get deep fried, and we don't know if he comes back and hides any documents or artifacts at his old home. I mean, maybe he left his medallion from the Battle of Yavin four back on Tatooine, we see that medallion again in this scene in the trailer. But again, no idea why he would do something like that. But Luke did actually come back once to search for Ben Kenobi's little hunt and found his former master's journal. Another scene that makes me think that this might be Tatooine is the fact that there are moisture evaporators all over the place. Moisture evaporators were a common machine on Tatooine used by moisture farmers to extract water from the air. That was Luke and his family's main gig. It should be noted though, this was actually a pretty common piece of machinery that was used on other desert planets like Lamu, Jakku, and even Lothal. But then there's one key thing missing from this planet that makes it not really Tatooine. Can you spot it? Well, it's short of Second Sun. From what we can tell, the suns of Tatooine always appear next to each other in the Tatooine sky, whether it's high double noon or setting double sun. In this opening scene, we get more or less a complete view of the sky, and the sun is obscured by the clouds. From what we can tell from other similar shots of Tatooine, the degree of difference between the two suns would mean that one sun would have to be visible in this shot. Of course, this is not an exact science, but I think with a good amount of certainty, this is not Tatooine. Which leaves us with Jakku and Jeddah as the front runners of what this planet is. Of course, if you look at this picture of Jeddah, though, maybe not. 
Now it actually makes sense that Jetta looks like this. Seems like the Death Star attack was powerful enough to eject a ton of dirt and rock faster than the escape velocity for the small moon. This left a lot of material floating in space and deformed the planet. There also seems to be a lot of volcanic activity on that side of the planet as well. On the habitable side of the planet, there were constant violet sandstorms. This serene desert that Ray is standing on doesn't really seem to fit that image. On the other hand, this was 30 years ago, and I don't know, maybe the people on Jetta were able to terraform the planet to make it nicer, but 30 years is really a blink of an eye on a geological scale. It should also be noted that Jetta was home to some of the oldest Jedi temples, and there were several different sects of force worshiping groups on this planet. There's also a thriving market for ancient Jedi texts and artifacts. And perhaps even more interesting, we know that Star Wars Episode 9 was filmed in Wadi Rum, Jordan, and I'm pretty sure that's where these scenes were filmed. But you know what other movie was shot in Jordan? Rogue One. That's why the cliffs in the background have the same type of erosion print and composition as the ones we see on Jetta. So at least in our world, Jetta and this world is the same place, Jordan. But that's not actually a solid piece of evidence because Wadi Rum is a very beautiful place and Jordan is a lot safer alternative when compared to the less stable countries in the region. It's been the location of dozens of films including several Martian films, uh, Prometheus, Dune, and many other otherworldly places. So unfortunately, we don't have enough evidence to say for certain that this is Jetta. Although, most likely it was filmed in the same place. So what about Jakku, Ray's old home? Well, from a cursory glance, the one big difference is the cloud structure. It seems a lot denser than what you would see normally on a planet like Jakku, which clearly has a very, very arid climate. But it's not too atypical to rule out the possibility that this is Jakku. But the places on Jakku that we did see tend to look more like a stereotypical Arabian desert. This is because Jakku was filmed in Abu Dhabi. This means fewer rock formations and erosion, and wind has basically beaten everything down into sand. As far as from a geological feature standpoint, Jakku represents this place less than Jeddah and Tatooine. And I feel as far as character development goes, going back to Jakku would be a step backwards for Rey, one that she probably wouldn't make. Now, unfortunately, that is the extent to my knowledge. I can't really figure out any more from these few scenes that we do see in the trailer. If I were to make an educated guess, I would say this might be Jetta on a good day. Like a really, really good day. I mean, if you look at the clouds uh, in the sky, they actually do look a bit thick for an arid climate, so maybe that's a side effect of the Death Star attack messing up the entire environment. Now, there are plenty of other desert planets or partially desert planets in the Star Wars galaxy. Lothal does have some similar areas and does have an ancient Jedi presence. Then there's Korban, which surface definitely had different minerals on it, giving it a redder look. Geonosis Morbran also had a similar color. Abafar had basically no features and was completely smooth. Ryloth was really windy and had more geological features and vegetation. Now I'm going to stop there because there are 179 worlds that we know of in the Star Wars galaxy that are uh, relatively habitable, have a desert climate, or at least desert genomes on it. There's just way too much material to go through. So we don't really have a real answer, but then again, it could just be a new place. Now there are two other locations that we see in this teaser trailer. One is a very mysterious looking forest. Kylo Ren is completely destroying primitive looking dudes with melee weapons. The location looks very red. This could be because the force is on fire or maybe the planet or moon they are on is getting light from a red gas giant or a red sun. Other than that, really don't know where it is. The other location that we see is a small bright city nestled in a bluish mountainous valley covered in clouds. There's something very beautiful about this image and I really can't wait to see what it is. And it actually does remind me of the world of Edu from Rogue One. And from what we can tell, there was a small population on the planet, about 2.5 million people living in scattered villages. And the biggest concentration lives in the Southern Hemisphere in one of the larger villages, which could be what we're seeing on screen. And you know what else is on Eodu? Well, a very important weapons research facility that focused on kyber crystal weaponization. This is a reach, but Ray does eventually end up on what looks like Endor. We talked about why we think it is Endor in our last video. And it seems like Rey is looking for the wreckage of the second Death Star. We hypothesize she's either looking for some artifact or information left behind by Emperor Palpatine, or she's looking for some material, say, like a giant kyber crystal. It's a reach, but that's the best guess we can give, and it really does look like you do if you look at them side by side. So that is our breakdown of the different locations we see in the Star Wars teaser trailer. Now, there's only one of me, and there's a lot more of you guys, so I want to hear what you think. Maybe you picked up on some clues that I haven't. 
Also guys, if you have a second, please subscribe to our new channel called Generation Yum. We're gonna be focusing on food, motorcycles, and travel. Those are kind of like my three other passions uh, besides Star Wars. So just check it out and uh, hit the link right here so you can subscribe to that channel. Uh, we haven't released any videos yet, but we will start releasing videos shortly. Anyway guys, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.